This is probably my favorite ad in this entire magazine. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about building. Welcome to Retro Bassin. I get a lot of requests from folks who watch our videos here at Retro Bassin to do more of a deep dive into the vintage Bass Pro Shops master catalogs. I've got a number of them, and most times if I feature a lure, an old school lure, and if I can find the original spread from it in Bass Pro Shops, I'll show that in the video. That being said, I do understand that is a little bit of a tease. I geek out over these old catalogs. Um, I actually read them cover to cover. There is so much old school goodness, and every time I open one, I find some bait, some product that I have long since forgotten. So today on Retro Bassin, we are about two weeks into 2021. And I thought, what a better way to celebrate the new year than to take a step back in time, 30 years. So this episode of Retro Bassin, we are going to deep dive into the lore section of my 1991 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the golden era of bass fishing. Consider subscribing and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. So I've got to be honest with you. This is a particular Bass Pro Shops catalog and year that I'm very familiar with. I think this is pretty much the first one that I really got my paws on as a kid because most of the spreads, even if they were lures that I did not own at the time, I remember really well. This comes from a time when I did not have a Bass Pro Shops in driving distance. And honestly, I don't even know if there was a Bass Pro Shops beyond the main one in Springfield, Missouri. There might have been a couple, but there was none that I was ever going to be able to get to. So I spent my time leafing through this, going page by page, making revision after revision of an order that ultimately I would place with an 800 number. Um, a lot of kids looked at toy catalogs for me. It was always these bad boys. There's a ton of old school goodness in this catalog. There's rods, there's reels, there's fish finders, and there's apparel. Ooh, is there apparel. But for today's episode of Retro Bassin, uh, we are gonna focus strictly on the lore section of this catalog. We actually got a lot of really good feedback about the Tackle Box giveaway that we did a few episodes ago. Now, um, I don't have enough gear to give away a loaded Tackle Box every episode. Um, I might save the next one if Retro Bassin hits 10,000 viewers. But, I did get a ton of good feedback and I got a lot of comments from folks that I have never heard from before on the channel. So stick around to the end of this video. Uh, I'm gonna give away two 30 year old new in package lures that are featured in this 1991 Bass Pro Shops catalog. I will, um, at the end of the video, I'll tell you how to enter. It's pretty easy. And I'll also show you the lures that you will get. So let's take a deep dive into old school goodness. So we're gonna go right to the lore section here. And as used to be the case for Bass Pro, they often would start off the entire lure selection with this bait, the Tornado Spinner Bait, uh, designed by Shoestring Dubois. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. This is a spinner bait that I don't know that I fully appreciated at the time it was still available. And unfortunately now, these are super hard to come by. It is basically a hybrid, it's a short arm spinnerbait, and it's got this hybrid blade, which can kind of do a couple different things depending upon the retrieve. It can fish like a standard spinnerbait, uh, or if you speed it up, it can actually flop around, um, sort of like a buzz bait action. Boy, uh, if Bass Pro Shops ever re-release these, I would probably uh, go nuts. We also had this, the laser eye spinnerbait, and then their uh, sort of entry-level spinnerbaits, the Uncle Bucks line. But on this next page, I want to show you this. 
This spinnerbait here is probably equally hard to find as the Tornado, but probably doesn't get nearly as much play. Uh, also from Shoestring Dubois, it's called the Cajun Rattler. And this design came in three different flavors here. as a spinnerbait, also in a crankbait, and a spin jig. The premise of this, it is a standard sort of Colorado-shaped blade, but in the middle is a rattle chamber. And there's actually some rattles that are within. I've got a few of these on the card of the old, old Cajun spinner. Man, I love this thing back in the day. It was a really cool spinnerbait, almost reminiscent of a man's loudmouth, but it had just one little rattle, so it wasn't like overbearing. Really a, a really cool spinnerbait. Unfortunate that they just don't have any more. Uh, oh, Lonnie Stanley right there with his Stanley spinnerbaits. Boy, this is, what does this say? The Stanley Thumper spinnerbait. So I think this is prior to the Wedge spinnerbaits, but this was probably my spinnerbait of choice back in the day. The double wheel leaf Stanley spinnerbait with a chartreuse and white skirt, gold blade, and a silver blade. I've probably caught more bass on that exact bait than any other one that I've thrown. And the old Stanley Pro trailers, which are pretty cool. You can learn so much about the kind of fishing that was popular at the time by looking at these old catalogs. The first three spreads are all dedicated to spinner baits. And in 1991, this was the bait. Straight King had some really cool spinner baits. I loved this diamond pattern blade. I've still got a few of these. We've got the standard spinner baits here. We've got the Pro 38 Special, which has got that Bell Weed Guard. And also this one, which is awesome. It's a one ouncer. Man, if I ever get back down to Florida, in like Lake Okeechobee, Ooh, look at that, a one ouncer with this giant blade and you really can't even appreciate how big that blade is. So we get into some other baits here, of course, still from Stray King, the Grass Frog. Love this bait. It was really the, um, the reason that I think I got hooked on bass fishing. First fish I ever caught was on a chartreuse Bill Dance Grass Frog. Turbid King Spoons, I don't have any of these, um, but I definitely have caught a few fish on the old Tri-Wing, or here it's called the Cackle Buzz from Strike King. And I've got a pair of those. More and more spinner baits. So many that I've forgotten. Guido Hibden, this is a really cool one from Worm King. The old uh, Woo Dave's. Meps Bass Killer. Love this spinnerbait. Blue Foxes. We've got some Bulldogs. <laughs> it's the, the Heart Shaker. Man, spinnerbait was king in 1991. No doubt about it. <laughs> More spinnerbaits, right? Isn't this amazing? The Hank Parker Classic Spinnerbait. Oof, I, I still throw these things. Classic Buzzbait. And here's one from Lunker Lore. Lunker Lore, of course, developed the first ever buzz bait. But this is a, a little known bait from them that was not on the market that long. And it's called the Vibration Rattler. Um, they were really doing some funky stuff with spin rate blades back in the day. I mean, they had about 20 pages of spinner baits to play with, so you had to differentiate somehow. And this was a neat blade. It was uh, sort of this cut in it. It was adjustable, and you can kind of do some different stuff with it. I have a number of these that I still throw today. Rounding out the buzz bait selection, we got some Uncle Buck's buzzers up here. We've got these, these quadrasonic or quadro buzzes, both inline and a standard buzz. And the old Norman Weed Walker, not a buzz bait, but when you reel that thing in, it sounds a heck of a lot like a buzz bait. Ooh, look at that spread of some old school Rapalas. Wow. If you saw my last episode, you, you know that I picked up a boatload of these fat wraps. Most of them are in the shallow shad wrap version, um, but I've got a few fat wraps that are in the, uh, the deeper diving version. Man, I cannot wait to get those out. All right, we're getting into some crankbait goodness here. 
classic Bagley uh, killer bee baits. Oof, just the color schemes, the way those things swam. Oh man, um, I wish I'd kept more Bagleys from back in the day. And check out this thing. I don't know if you guys remember this, the old grass rat. Kind of jumping on the frog bandwagon Bagley style. It's a hard bodied um, Bagley frog bait. It's got a single hook on it. Um, I never caught a ton of fish on them. Um, I wasn't much of a frog fisherman back in the day. I'm, I'm not a great frog fisherman now. But these are still around. They're pretty hard to find online. You can get them in the aftermarket. You're going to spend more than $4.89 though, that's for sure. All right, when you think of 1991, <laughs> this is probably my favorite ad in this entire magazine. Um, when Rick Clun won the 1990 Bassmaster Classic on the James River using the RC1 and RC3, I was hooked. Um, there he is with his Bassmaster Classic trophy. It was his fourth ever Bassmaster Classic, and he won it on these two baits that he designed. Um, the RC3 and the smaller RC1. I don't know what it was about Pose, but it was definitely probably my crankbait of choice back in the day. I, I was initially just hooked, I think, on the color schemes, the looks of those baits. Um, I love the old school Pac-Man eye, and I caught a ton of fish on them. They also came in the Super Cedar line, everything from the 300 the Super Cedar 400, and this one, this is a monster, the Super Cedar 1100. And the old Pose crate of Rattlin baits. It came in a wooden crate with cedar shavings. You got four baits, and they kind of vary depending on what crate you got. And it usually came with a keychain, and sometimes it would come with a, a hat as well. All for the price of 1869. And let's not forget what you guys are probably looking at here. Fish World Lures Incorporated, Mr. Tom Mann. We've got the classic Pogo Shad and the Pogo Minnow. Oh, still miss those things. All right, so here's some pretty cool baits. Just got back from the Ozarks, Ozark Mountain. This is a company I think is still around today. I don't know how much they're making of this stuff, but the classic wood chopper, the Ripper. They had some crank baits as well, but I remember this wood chopper. I had, I think, this exact bait. This thing tore up the water. While like a head and tiny torpedo was a little bit more subtle, um, this thing was not, which is probably why they worked really well for peacock bass. Got some other pretty cool discontinued baits over here. Uh, the old wiggle stick from Blue Fox. This fish is sort of like a uh, Head and Sonic. I've got a few of these. I would definitely bust out. Uh, the old Straight King Bill Dance Dancing Shad. The classic Bassarino. Dalton Special. Nippy D. And this one from Crankbait Corp called the Bull Cat. Looks a whole lot like something from Live Target, doesn't it? Came in just four colors for four different kinds of catfish, and I've definitely got a few of these. This is a pretty cool spread of some baits that are um, long since out of commission. Ah, nice spread on the classic rattle trap. Nothing too new over here, but they do have this, the slap stick, and as well as some different lure kits that you probably wouldn't be able to find anymore these days. The metallic shag kit and the hot traps assortment. Ooh, getting into bomber territory here. Look at all those long A's. <laughs> Look at all those model A's. Oh, man. Uh, some pretty cool colors I think are probably discontinued at this point. I have not seen this one, 34. Yeah, so 34 is a color you don't see anymore. That's called Bleeding Shiner. And this one, G Finish Fire Tiger. Ooh, if I could find one of those, man, I'd fish that. I even liked the bill, by the way is got the G finish on it. That's pretty cool. All right, some more from what is now known as the uh, the Pradco company. Um, we've got Cotton Cordell, we've got the Ripplin Redfin, and also the Classic Redfin in that G finish color. Man, I miss that G finish. Some other pretty cool baits with Cordell, Crazy Shad, and then we've got the CC Rattling Shad. 
Here's another one, the Neon Spots. I fished a ton of spots, but I don't know why. I just love the Neon Spots. They came in, I think it was five different colors. Um, had a black, red, blue, sort of a green chartreuse, and then crawfish. But just, it's got this G film on it. Really one of the coolest looking lipless crankbaits out there. And of course, a nice big O assortment from Cotton Tordell as well. Ooh, so these are pretty cool. I wish they still made these. The Rattle Spot Minnow. They came in three different sizes. It's basically a, a rattle spot lengthened a little bit. And these things fish actually pretty cool. I loved the colors on these, um, especially this one, which I think is smallmouth bass. And the suspending spots. I'll actually fish a suspending uh, lipless crankbait in a lot of the same ways that I'll fish like a suspending jerkbait. Same situations. I just feel like it's got a little bit of a tighter wiggle. It's got a little bit of a smaller profile. But in all the situations where I would fish a suspending jerkbait, I'll throw one of these as well. Some nice rebels. Oh, uh, here we are getting into some cool rebel territory for sure. And some rebel wee crawls. I love these. It's sort of the little creature baits from Rebel. Some of these are still available today, like the wee frog, the cricket hopper. But a couple that you do not see, the old creek creature. And my personal favorite was this guy, the catter crawler. It is a um, ultra realistic sort of caterpillar night crawler bait. You're supposed to cast this thing out, let it sink down, and then if you do reel it in, it sort of wiggles a little bit like a crankbait. It came in five different colors. It came in woolly bear, uh, catalpa worm, a uh, grub worm, earthworm, and zebra caterpillar. Oh, here we go. A nice spread from man's. And by the way, look at a very young Paul Elias there with a rather sweet beard fishing one of the best all-time baits for shallow grass flats ever, the man's one minus and baby one minus in the old school colors. Look at those. Nice selection of pre rapala storms. Of course, they don't see pre rapala because they didn't know rapala was going to happen. Um, but go try to find a pre rapala wiggle wart for three eighty nine today. And let me know how you make out. Oh, and then we've got a really cool spread from Fred Arbogast. If you head on over to Lorna today, they've actually got some really cool new colors for both the Hula Popper and the Jitterbug. But some of the baits that I miss that, man, I wish they would just come back out with. The Windwalker, sort of a casting bait like a Zara Spook. And this one, the Mudbug. Man, one of my favorite crankbaits of all time, especially in that crawfish pattern. When it comes to plastic worms, boy, Bass Pro Shops used to have a ton of really cool models that you do not see anymore. Uh, this one was pretty cool. It was called the Triple Ripple. It's a standard uh, curly tail worm, sort of like um, a Berkeley Power Worm, 7-inch, or maybe even a, a culprit. But it's got three little flanges on it, so it adds a little bit more movement. We also had this one, which I don't have a ton of experience with, but if I ever saw it now, I'd fish it. It's called the Cajun Worm. Ooh, look at this, the Pro Tail. So this is pretty cool. This was a almost a gator tail style worm, but it had a little pocket, and you could actually place a plastic rattle in there. Had it in a worm form, grub form, and also in crawl form as well. You notice each pincher had a little pocket you could put a rattle in. Ooh, nice spread from Mans of some uh, old Mans worms that you some you can get, some you can't get. Classic jelly worm here. Still have those auger tails. You're not going to find them anymore, and you're definitely not going to find this. The old five-inch super limit finder. Sort of like a do-nothing worm with a little bit of do something at the end there. It's got two hooks pre-rigged in this weedless fashion. This is something you would fish like on a Carolina rig. And then we've got some man's manipulator worms over here and the leech, which is actually a pretty cool trailer that I used to use a pretty good bit. 
Oh, my buddy, Flintlock Dave would like this spread, the old slider worms. I've actually picked up a few old uh, original slider worms, and I'm very tempted to go buy a slider rod. Slider just actually has a um, like an anniversary edition out of their old school slider rod. I might pick one up and do a little bit of a slider episode. Ooh, the old culprit worms and the culprit sticky worm. This is pretty cool. So this is basically like the sort of fuzzy side of a piece of Velcro. And the theory is with this bait is that the bass's little micro teeth will actually catch in this weave and it won't be able to spit the bait, giving you extra time to set the hook. Now the key would be the bass is gonna have to bite it just on this strip, so I don't know how often that worked out. Um, but we've got a few packs of these and we will probably find out come springtime. One of my favorite lure designers that I've not yet featured on Retro Bassin is Mr. Guido Hibden. Had a couple of really cool baits back in the day that he designed for Worm King. He had this one, which is the classic Guido bug baby bug and so bug. I believe this one is actually based off of a mold that his son made of a live crawfish. We've also got these, the G3 and G4 tubes. These are really nice, super supple tubes that were almost, felt like they were injection molded instead of like the standard tubes. And this one, the old original ringworm uh, from Worm King. By far though, my favorite part of these old Bass Pro Shops catalogs is this, the order form. I can't tell you how often as a kid I would take these order forms, I actually would photocopy them and just have running lists of lures that I hope to get one day. Uh, <laughs> long before, I feel like these days it's almost too easy to go to a Bass Pro, but back in 1991 when I first had this catalog, there was not a Bass Pro near me. So literally I had to just sort of mull over this magazine for weeks and weeks, fill out this order form, and then generally I would call the old 800 number to place my order. But I spent a lot of time on this page back in 1991. Well, I hope that you enjoyed our little journey into the 1991 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. If you like this sort of episode, drop a comment down below and let me know which year catalog you would like to see me walk through next. But now let's get to the part that all my bass and buds have been waiting for, this episode's tackle giveaway. These baits are, I'm sure, were sold in other years aside from 1991, but when I think of this catalog, uh, these were definitely two standouts for me back in the day. Uh, the first bait of the giveaway is this. It is a Cotton Cordell Neon Spot, and I'm pretty sure this is that green color. It is a Sinker Neon Spot in the half ounce model, and son, this thing is still a catcher today. And I didn't staple that. I don't know who. I think these old packages, the glue kind of comes apart, so um, whenever I got this, that's how they fixed it. And the other item, I referenced Lunker Lure. It was really the first buzz bait ever invented. And this is a line that I don't know how long uh, it was in production. I do remember it from the 1991 catalog, but beyond that, I'm not so sure. So you are also gonna get this, a Lunker Lure buzz bait rat lure. And I can show you this now that we're, um, we've got a live lure here as opposed to just the catalog, but it has a nice blade, a big old Lunker Lure blade. This thing's actually sort of almost chartreuse dipped. It's got that Lunker Lure head with a tube body. And listen to this. Oh, she rattles. So all you have to do to register to win these two baits is to be a subscriber and drop a comment down below. Um, just like last time, uh, I will pick a winner um, in about a week's time. I think I'll probably do a drawing next Friday night. I don't know if you all have noticed, but I have been trying to do my best to A, post weekly, and B, drop a video on either a Saturday or a Sunday morning. I know that probably according to the YouTube algorithm, that's not the best time to drop fishing videos. But again, we like to do it old school here. And there was always something magical to me about Saturday mornings with Jimmy Houston and Sunday mornings with Bill Dance. So kind of depending on how Friday night goes, I'm going to try to either get a video out to you guys either Saturday or Sunday morning. 
Um, so, in that next video, I will announce the winner of this giveaway, and I'll also announce it in a pinned comment um, in this video. So until next time, keep the carpet side up, and definitely, fish it old school. How do they even make tab anymore? Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastards.